I'm Kat Tassiello here at Utopia for the last set of panels at the Woodstock Film Festival. Um, and, and who are fiercely independent in, in spirit, um, no matter uh, their, their sort of heavyweight champion um, status, uh, like Marty Scorsese. And, but for me, I think uh, the, I'm never m more aware of, of my fi physical appearance. I'm never made more aware than doing these studio pictures. You know, they put such emphasis on, um, on, on looks, and there's so many opinions of like studio suits trying to, to say what they find attractive and what I need to be, and, so, and, and, and so many opinions, and that frustrates me a lot. Um, you know, uh, in, for me, I think what I rely most on is collaboration with my director, and, and there's, it's always watered down, and there's a lot of opinions. The more money, the more p people making decisions, and that, that's frustrating for me. Um, it's very short. You could do a film in three weeks or four weeks. Um, studio films, you'll work on a quarter of a page for days, you know, and there's no luxury in, in independent filmmaking in that sense. But also it kind of puts you, puts everyone in such a, um, kind of, everyone teams up and they, it just becomes a group effort and there's a different connection, I think. It, it's fast. It's, it's immediate. I mean, that's, that's, how I, that's how I feel. Yeah, it seems like there's a different objective with uh, studio films is to just, uh, you know, it's a business. And uh, rightfully, you know, they want to they wanna, uh, succeed at making money. But being at the uh, awards last night and hearing some of the speeches and what people were talking about, really, it was kind of like, you, is this a joke? The thing counts. Like, and it says whatever, the, the motto is whatever it takes to save a child, and it really does. I've been an ambassador with UNICEF for the past five years, and... It has been really life life changing and transformative in in the sense that I I don't think that I can go anywhere without having the memories or the experiences that I've had in the field and meeting these children and the situations outside of um, America and Europe. You know, there's poverty everywhere in a, in a sense that is that you don't that you don't think is is real. You know, like you see it in a movie, or you see it, oh, you think it's Africa, or you think it's, you know, India, but it's, it's actually everywhere you go. If it's in Peru and Russia, and I mean, yeah. you'll see the, the wealthier areas in those places, of course, there's always that city that's built up from it, but everything else is a shanty town. And the fact that, that it exists and it's getting worse, you know, you think our economy is suffering right now, you know, politically the climate is, is is very hostile, you know, in other parts of the world. And even if there are laws protecting children or protecting people, they're not really upheld. And so it's it's pretty eye-opening. And I, uh, after the second time, I was ready for comedy, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it was uh, it was it was a powerful experience. Did you feel really exonerated. Uh, yeah, that yeah, too. That yeah, was very yeah, powerful as well. Now. I mean, yeah. I just remembered. Yeah. Thank you for mentioning that. Yeah, the exonerated. Yeah. You know, it's like what Lucy's talking about. You know whether it's hunger or, you know, human trafficking or um, the death penalty and people are innocent. I mean, these are s things that we should be talking about, you know? And I think when people are reading the newspaper, they kind of just skip, skip over that sometimes. They're like, oh, no, 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 shit, I don't want to wreck my morning. You know, I don't want to go there, you know? And they're easy to pass over because, I don't know, I mean, for myself, I think sometimes I might pass over because it makes me feel powerless. You know, like, well, what can I do about it? So I'd rather not read about it because then I know that I'm not in a position to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. And as actors, you know, we have an opportunity to bring light to, to things. So there is something we, you know, mm -hmm. ultimately we can do about it. I did, uh, kind of recently. And uh, the subject matter was, was hard, but, um, but there, was a real, uh, there was a real humanity uh, underneath what was all it? this uh, suffering. It was called stitching, and um, it was it, it was it's been banned in like uh, where was that Annie? Uh, fucking some somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, people are afraid of a, a lot anything of, a lot that's of been banned. Been we banned. want to see it twice. Yeah, you want to see it twice. But um, when I was reading it, I got emotional. You know, it mo it moved me just in the reading of it, and I knew like that was something that I needed to explore. So I. So I, I did it twice, actually. Uh, uh, after the second time, I was ready for comedy, but uh, <laughs> but uh, it was a, it was it was a powerful experience.
de we decided that the way they treat certain people, the, the way that they do things in their life is not okay with us, and we have to go in there and fix it. And I don't know that that is always the way, because you're, you're not taking into consideration the culture of what's going on and the history of what's happening. It's, it's about education, is what I've learned. Are you a first generation American? I am. Are, I am. are you a Vera? Yes. Are you? Yeah. Hey. Hey, we're, we're going to start our own I club. I see the <laughs> I knew there was a reason we got the three of you together. Okay, there we go. Because hey, I don't see yeah. her that way. Right. I don't see her that way. No, if I saw her that way, it'd be so flat, I would right. think. You know, like, right. you kind of have to go in thinking, well, she's, she's honest and she's dedicated and direct in her way that she sees things. Mm -hmm. But you That's what all bitches can't. say. <laughs> <laughs> You're just being honest. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding, because I get called that a lot, too. But Hello, I'm Cal. And uh, there is really a special energy up here, you know? People always, you know, in Brooklyn or wherever, you know, I live in you know, Woodstock, you know? Yeah, Woodstock is cool, you know, but until you get up there, you, you, and you've, that part of your brain that kind of opens up when, you, when you're standing in nature like this. You know, I live in Brooklyn, and I thought that was kind of the country, you know? We got Prospect Park there and stuff, which is beautiful. But this is the real deal. And um, it just seems like such a fitting place for such uh, positive energy and, and creativity. So I'm, I would love to come back sometime and um, spend more time here. I think that means um, not compromising uh, un until you really have to. I mean, we'll have to make compromises at some point, somewhere. But it's starting out with the, the true idea, your, your vision, your, uh, your beliefs, and and having the courage to stand by them. But um, it means to really um, fiercely believe in yourself and hold your beliefs um, sacred to you. All right, now it is about the film festival itself. Just that I really believe in it. Um, I've been to a lot of film festivals and, uh, and, and you know, they're all important, but um, there's something about this, the, the spirit here that it reminds us of what independent filmmaking is about. And um, so, um, you know, I'm, I'm not jaded, you know, and, and I, I was reminded of that by coming up here and really, really feeling uh, moved, you know, by, by, by this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much.